What's up, YouTube? For today's video, we have a full black and white walkthrough team. This one is for Patreon. If you like your theme team done, you can check it out in the description of the video under the Patreon link. Ryan, this one is for you. So pretty much, I just did my walkthrough team from black and white. What was your walkthrough team, people? What was the first six Pokemon you had in your team? Please leave below in the comment section. I'd like to see what your teams are. If you enjoy these theme team series, people, let's drop a like on the video. Let's see if we can get a thousand likes and let's get into it. I may be streaming tonight. I'm not 100% sure. I'm actually feeling a little bit uh, off tonight. So I'm, I may or may not, but my link is in the description for Twitch anyway. Make sure you are following there already. Uh, if not tonight, I'll definitely be doing our usual battle stream uh, tomorrow. Okay, so we have uh, Battle Armored. It's got this against Lana from Star Wars. And we got an Incineroar lead. It's going to fake me out there. Doing a little bit of damage to Zeb Shrieker, but that is uh, you know, all fine. We've got a max attack, max speed, physical Zeb Shrieker. we got Wild Charge, Bounce, Flame Charge, and Double Kick. Going for the, <laughs> going for the Fight EMZ Double Kick right now. It actually was pretty handy on Zeb Shrieker because a lot of Rock types you know, swapped into Zeb Shrieker. And with a physical set, the only real good fighting move that it gets is double kick. So it's pretty bad. So putting a Z move on this was actually, you know, it's actually handy in a lot of situations. So it does some really, really big damage to Incineroar considering. And uh, it does about three quarters. So I'm actually really happy with that. Now, Incineroar is going to go for a Z move itself. And of course, it's going to be its signature Z move here, which goes for about 10 hours. Now, people, also, I was going to say, tomorrow I've got, I, I may have, to, I may have like, we may have a triple, uh, epic sweeps tomorrow. I've got like three or four of them I did this week, so there may be a triple upload tomorrow of just some Pokemon sweeps if I'm able to get them all edited in time. So that should be pretty funny. Basically, they're from all the teams I've done this week. Okay, so the z move is going to obviously take me out in one shot there. Zeb Trick is going to go down, but it did a pretty good amount of damage to Incineroar, so I'm quite happy with that. Alright, so we got my Unpheasant, which is going to be pretty unpheasant for, unpleasant for this uh, Incineroar. It's going to swap out this is actually a special set, so let's go over this. We got max uh, special attack, max speed. We got Echo Voice and Metronome with the ability Super Light. We got Heat Wave for Steel types, Air Slash for Stab, and Hidden Power Fighting as well for uh, just for normal types as well as uh, Steel types as well. If I don't want, if I want that 100% actually. Okay, so we got Grape Juice coming here. I'm gonna get a couple of Echo Voice off against it, but it's gonna go for an explosion. So. I thought that I'd be able to live this one. Makaga's attack isn't the greatest thing in the world, but uh, you know, I would, wouldn't live that well. But uh, I lived a little bit better than I thought. So it's still pretty good. And I can keep going for Echo Voice to see if I can get this power up uh, with this set. So obviously with Echo Voice, the more you use it in succession, you know, the more powerful it gets. Obviously it caps out yeah, as well. He doesn't just keep getting more powerful and more powerful. So we've got a Lopunny coming here, which is uh, definitely not going to be a Mega Lopunny. Now, I know this is going to be out outspeed me and uh, probably take me out. So I was hoping I could, you know, barely lift this one and, uh, you know, get one attack off. It's going to be a special set. Go for the Ice Beam. I lift it, which is really, really nice. I don't get Freeze Axe, and I'm able to get off another Echo Voice. So that was like the third one. That's doing a lot of damage now. I wish I got a crit there uh, with a Super Life, but that wasn't the case. But uh, Lopunny is going to take me out the Ice Beam, and Pheasant's going to go down there. So, yeah, a pretty good, a pretty good effort there by the Under Pheasant. I like Under Pheasant. It's a really interesting Pokemon. Okay, so now we're going to go into Lillian. Now, this was a physical sweeper. It actually gets, it's pretty barren on the physical side, which is why I want to use it. But uh, I come up with a pretty fun strategy. So we got Max Attack, Max Speed, obviously, on this one. Uh, we got Sword Dance. We got Petal Blizzard. We got Natural Gift with the Sugar Berry and Giga Impact. And when I say it's barren in its physical side, I mean very, very barren. Like, that, that's practically the only usable moves it can really have. Okay, so we got the Incineroar coming in. I was thinking I could go for the Sword Dance here, but I don't think I'm going to be out enough room for it. It's going to take me out of Fire Move. So, yeah, I should go for the Natural Gift for the Shooker Berry. However, we got the Incineroar swapping out and Decidueye is going to come in. Unfortunately, that, that really sucks because that's not going to be very effective. So, here you go, guys. Here's the fastest attack animation in the game. Um, it looks really cool though. I really do like natural gifts animation. Okay, so the situation is going to be able to take me out easy. There's really no point in me swapping out anymore. I'm just going to go for Petal Blizzard and swap something else in. It pretty much is wasted. So we got the Spirit Shackle coming from the Decidueye. I'm going to live again there. And guess what? It lives on one health. Guys, the merch is available. You know where to get it. Link is in the description. All right, so go for the Petal Blizzard there. And uh, does a little bit more damage to the Decidueye. I'm quite happy with the result there. And uh, Lilligan is going to go down to the second Spirit Shackle. I mean, I couldn't have swapped out even if I, you know, even if I wanted to because the Spirit Shackle's ability. So we got the Lilligan going down, but uh, I'm, I'm happy with that one. That's fine. Uh, now we're going to go into my Simi here. Now this Simi here I've used a couple of times or once or, once or twice. It's a very, very bulky set. It actually works for it. It's very, very like 
uh, you, know, you, you don't want to underestimate it. So go for the fire spin here. Almost take it out. But guess what, guys? The fire spin actually it activates the weakness policy. So the weakness policy on this Sijuai is going to be activated. However, it's a mega troll because this Sijuai is actually going to go down to the fire spin damage. Man, I would have been annoyed if that was my decision. Why getting that, you know, getting that excitement of weakness policy, then going down to the uh, the, the fire spin trapping damage. All right, but that one is down. Now we got the Primarina coming in. I'm gonna go for the Toxic against this uh, against this thing. At least if I can get that up on it, that'd be nice. We got got on this set max health, max defense. I oh, know we got uh, Toxic Amnesia, fire spin, and recycle. We got the ability as Gluttony and the item as Iapavero. So this is a physical Primarina. Lucky for me, I'm gonna be able to attack that one rather nicely. So pretty much what I can keep doing, since it's got gluttony at half health, you know, or under that, it can actually eat that berry, like, a lot quicker than it normally does. And it heals a lot more than your, a normal citrus berry does. And then I can use Recycle to basically restore that berry over and over each time it is consumed. And then trap the opponent with the Fire Spin and Toxic racking up the damage too. And boosting my special defense with uh, Amnesia. Very, very gimmicky, but fun set to use. Um, you know, I, I've got uh, much success with this. Okay, so go for the Amnesia. They're boosting my special defense by two stages. I had a little feeling this might be a special set. So we've got the Orikario Sensei. I, call, I like calling that Orikario Sensei. Going for the uh, TDNS thing, making me confused. That's not too much of a worry because it is Fire Spin trapped in. So at least it's doing some kind of damage. I thought to go for the Toxia. That could be a good option as well. Or I should get some more damage with Fire Spin. So I had to go for Fire Spin because it pretty much had already lost half health. So that'd be, you know, that it'd be going down around the same time anyway. So now it's going to hit me with the Hurricane, doing a fair bit of damage to me still. I did have a plus two in special defense, but obviously um, I was running max health and max defense. So I wasn't super bulky on that type. Okay, so now we're going to go for the Fire Spin on the Orikara. I thought it'd be in range to actually take it down, but I lived on one health! The merch is available, right? The merch is available. So Simicia is going to get hit by a second Hurricane and it's going to go down. Man, I could have recycled it. I thought it'd be enough to actually take it out. Orikario is going to go down the life orb damage, but man, that was that was two one health lives. We, we had one on the Lilligant and one on the Orikario. Okay, so into Samurott. Samurott was uh, definitely my favorite starter in this gen. Uh, on this set, we got a special set. We got Assault Vest. We got uh, Hydro Pump, obviously for Stab. We got Blizzard. We got Air Slash. Yes, it gets Air Slash. This is quite a good move on it. Uh, well, quite a fun move on it, I guess. And we got Grass Knot as well. We got the ability of Shell Armor and Item Assault Vest, if I didn't mention that. Max Health, Max Special Attack, and uh, just the other four EVs wherever you need to put it. Okay, so Primarina is poison. That's important, guys. That's important. Now, I can go for the Grass Knot. And I guess that's the best thing to go for. I could go for Air Slash as well to go for the Flitches. But I thought, let's go for Grass Knot for some fixed damage at the start. I may go for Air Slash at the end if things get uh, pretty close with the Moonblast. But I do have the Assault Vest, uh, which is actually making Moonblast not hit very hard at all. The only thing I have to worry about is Assault Vest actually dropping... Sorry, not Assault Vest. The Moon... Guys, Assault Vest drops the special attack. Moonblast... Roast me. Moonblast taking away uh, negative one in special attack. So we got uh, Primarina going for another Moonblast there. I think I can tank like two more of them. And uh, I'm going to be able to take it out this turn. Primarina is going to go down anyway. There's no point swapping it out. I almost went for a Hydro Pump there. Just in case the Incineroar actually swapped in. But, uh, you know, thank goodness they didn't there. I mean, it was very risky for them to, to actually swap that in. Okay, so the last Pokemon is Incineroar. It does have a little bit of health back. I know that I'm going to probably... I probably might miss with Hydro Pump, so I thought I should go for an Air Slash here just to finish it off. You know, I don't want to go for like the Hydro Pump because it could miss. So go for Air Slash on the Incineroar. It hits. I'm like, this is really, really good, guys. And it lives on one health. Like, what is this? That's three now. That's three in one battle. Someone's gonna make a compilation. I'm gonna make a. I'm gonna make a compilation video of that. So Incineroar's gonna take me out with a Dankus Lariat. My last Pokemon is the godly Stunfist. Stunfist is the, it's the true MVP here, people. Look at its face. Look at the expression on its face right now. So uh, we got the Darkest Lair out from the Incineroar. Now, this was a bulky, pain-splitting uh, Stunfist. Run this a couple of times. Max Special Defense and Max uh, Defense. So nothing in health, making pure you know, use of that pain split. And very, very bulky on either side. Finishing off with the Disrespect Mud Slap. And that one is the first game. It's nothing like finishing off a battle of Mud Slap, people. Uh, we've also got uh, Muddy Water and Discharge on that set, too. Okay, let's get to battle number two. Your boy needs a drink of water, actually. Mm. Some lime. Got to get your natural lime water into you, people. We got a battle on my Discord. This one was against uh, Tapu Dust. We have a uh, Lifeheart lead using the Prankster Thunder Wave. So this is probably going to be a general pain in the ass team again. And of course, I got paralyzed first turn. Never, ever saw that one coming. So I was thinking, well, I could probably go for the Hidden Power Fighting here. That'd be pretty good. And now it's going to use Stand Attack. 
God damn, I wish I, I wish I had keen eye at this point in the time. So uh, I'm going to go for the uh, hidden power fight here. We got the knockoff from Life Heart. That's going to do some pretty good damage to me. Doing over half health, getting rid of my Metronome there. And uh, hidden power is going to miss, which sucks. Man, sand attackers. I mean, I could swap out here, but there's really no point anymore because I'm paralyzed. I'm just going to get like one shot of buy anything. So go for hidden power. I finally get past the sand attacks. Does well over half health. I'm really happy with that. And uh, now it's going to go for a knockoff and finish me off. That was, uh, I guess that wasn't the greatest star in the world, but there really wasn't much I could do with the Thunder Wave and, like, spamming sand attacks. So now we've got the Zeb Shrieker coming in. I know that I can definitely outspeed this. If it goes for a Pranks of Thunder Wave, nothing is going to happen. So I knew a sand attack would probably come my way. So that's going to drop my actually going for the Flame Charge on the Live Heart here. I just want to boost up my speed a little bit because I am actually running Adamant Nature on this. And obviously the, uh, you know, the Flame Charge is making up for me running Adamant Nature instead of Jolly. So we got another sand attack from the light part here, dropping my uh, accuracy again. That's negative two, and I'm gonna hit the second flame charge, and light part is down. That's good. I'm about, I'm about sick of this thing dropping my accuracy. So the, that one's down. That's, a, that's, a, I guess that's okay. Uh, an okay start. I've got plus two in speed. Now we got this spirit tube. So I'm like, mm, okay, what am I gonna do to this? It's very, very bulky. I could go for wild charge and see how much it would do. Decide to go for the wild charge against it. It lands, which is nice. It actually does some, some surprising damage. So I'm guessing this spirit tube, right? is definitely more of a sweeping version. It actually critical hits me with the ominous win there, but it, if I got a boost, then that would have been some smoking hot you-know-what. So go for the wild charge again on the spirit tube, almost taking it out there. Um, I do actually live the recoil, but it's going to take me out with another ominous win. And that's the streaker down, but it did a pretty good, uh, you know, solid job there. I'm happy with that. Oh, I guess it took out two Pokemon by itself. So we got it with a little bit of help from the Unpheasant, of course. So bringing in the Lily good here. I know that I can probably live an attack from this thing, being an ominous wind, if it's a special type attack, I know, you know, I've got, oh, okay, uh, base special defense. So I've got that sword dance up, which is hot. However, we got a Z move coming from the spirit team here. And uh, this is going to be Psychium Z uh, coming from the, uh, whatever psychic move this spirit team has. Man, I really like spirit team. It's such a, it's such a badass Pokemon. Um, on this Lilligan set, it was actually pretty good if I got around like grass type Pokemon. If we had a fire or a steel type Pokemon, if there was only one of them, I could do the you know, the natural Gary, a natural uh, berry, a uh, Shuka, a uh, natural berry, natural gift Shuka berry, natural berry, guys. It's a new move. I'm, I'm inventing new moves all the time. So we got this spirit tomb. Uh, it's gonna go down to the petal blizzard, but that's all good. Uh, that one's down finally. So now we got the Ori Corio coming out. So it's like, okay, well. There's really nothing I can do to this. Let's go for Petal Blizzard, get some damage on it. There's no point in me swapping out. However, it's going to uh, you know, it's gonna outspeed me and finish me off with the Acrobatic. So it's a physical set. Lilligan's going to go down. It's not the, you know, it's definitely not the worst thing in the world. There wasn't much I could really do in that matchup. Anyway, so into the Samurott now. I've got height. I've got a lot of moves to hit this with. I was wondering what other moves I actually would do. Uh, we've got the U-turn on Orikario. So wait, do we have Orikario set, say, in both bat? I think we did I, I, I distinctly was one of were they both shot I think they were both shiny or there was definitely two of them anyway so we got the save by coming in this thing was a general pain in the ass as it always is Blizzard does a pretty good amount of damage and I'm quite happy with that uh, now save by is gonna have some leftovers recovery so I was definitely thinking along the lines of uh, it's gonna be bulky now it's gonna go for the calm mind so okay calm mind I'm guessing a, after I'm using this hydro I'm like I'm guessing it probably has something like recover Car mine and like two offensive attacks pretty much. Or it could be a stally set with like, you know, like maybe a will o wisp or something. But I'm leaning towards more like two stab attacks, like a dank pulse or a shadow ball. Okay, uh, so this is the moment here. I'm gonna go for the hydro pump again. Safe light is gonna go for the recover. So okay, I need to actually shut this down. And all I'm thinking of on my team is there's only one Pokemon that actually do that, which is the Simi Sage. Now Simi uh Simi Simi Sin, not Simi Sage, man. I always, I always mess my monkeys up. So pretty much all I had to do was put a Toxic on this. I knew that I could beat this matchup if I got enough Amnesias up and I trapped it in so it couldn't escape, right? So that was my plan. Uh, I didn't want to sustain too much damage from, uh, you know, a special attack. Okay, so I swapped into a Dark Pulse. That really wasn't the greatest, uh, you know, luck there. It doesn't it actually doesn't do a lot of damage, so which is telling me that Sable is very, very bulky. Obviously, it's got max health, and I'd say it's got max defense, right? So it doesn't have much of a special attack. So outspeeding, getting the Toxic off. That there was the uh, you know the most important play there, poisoning this thing. And uh, obviously it doesn't have rest, it's got recover, so we're all good. It's not going to be able to get rid of that poison. So it's going to go for another Dark Pulse there. My uh, Berry is going to kick in with the Gluttony. It would have kicked in, I guess it would have kicked in anyway. And uh, Simusi is going to get uh, lots of its health back. So pretty much here, I can go for the Fire Spin, 
or they're going to swap. So I was thinking, well, even if they did swap, I can at least trap another Pokemon in and, you know, get them into the Toxic Amnesia Cycle again and maybe take them out. However, they're going to stand and go for the Calm Mind. So it's like, okay, that's fine. Um, I haven't revealed that I've got Amnesia yet. So uh, th this actually would be pretty good. And I know that I can leave another attack from this thing, judging on the damage it did to me earlier. So going for the Fire Spin there. Now, Sableye is going to have to go for another Recover very soon if it wants to live out the next you know, turn or two. I can go for Amnesia and then I can recycle my Berry back you know, if it needed. Okay, so Sableye is going to go down the next turn here. I was thinking the best play here would be to go for the Amnesia. And we got the Sableye going for the Recover there. So that's going to get lost with its health back. I'm guessing they're going to try and get one really hard hit off before it goes down. So go for a recycle here, and now I can go for the amnesia in the next turn. So I've recycled back my Iapa Berry, which is nice. So even if it does do a lot, you know, over half damage, which I'm definitely expecting it to do, my berry will kick in and heal me. So now all i got to do is go for the amnesia. So Sable is going to go definitely go down the next turn or in the next one after that. So, popping up that Amnesia, it's really good that I'm, you know, I'm actually able to actually outspeed it, which is nice. So, I've got a plus two in Special Defense. That's actually cancelled out two of their Calm Minds. And uh, Pulse really doesn't do too much. And my Gluttony is going to kick in, and my Berry is going to get eaten, people. So, at this moment, the only really way that Sableye can get around me is with a critical hit. Uh, apart from that, this my set absolutely completely walls theirs. Uh, you know, it, it can definitely wall them like all day, uh, pretty much. So Sableye is going to go down the next turn to the Fire Spin and Toxic. Well, I think it's going to go to the Fire Spin first. Going for another Amnesia, there's really no point going for another... Uh, you know, I, I could have gone for another um, Recycle there, but I decided to go for another Amnesia instead. So we got the Sableye going for a, a, a Dark Pulse again, and it's not going to do too much. And the Sableye is going to go down, which is good. But that matchup took a while. I knew, though... Basically, in that matchup, I knew that I was always going to win it if I didn't take a lot of damage at the start. Um, if the Sableye was more offensive in special attack, I could have had problems there setting up there. I would have had to set up the Amnesias right away. Okay, so we've got the Lampert coming in. I'm going to go for Toxic against that again. Now, the only thing is uh, with the you know, with my Fire move, there's not too much I can do uh, you know, damage-wise. However, it's going to have Toxic as well. So I'm like, okay, that pretty much ends my Simiseer set. There's really not... There's no way I can get rid of its Toxic. You know, it doesn't have rest or anything like that. I don't have, like, a, a aromatherapy or heal bell user. So that's fine. I thought, well, I can swap uh, Simiseer out and maybe go into something else to do some damage. It's a fairly even battle at the moment. So going out of Simiseer and going into the godly Stunfist. Now, Stunfist has a, a, you know, a variety of moves to use against this thing. Uh, it's going to go for the Confused Rain. Now, Stunfist has... It has Muddy Water, it's got Mud Slap for actually drops, and it's also got Discharge as well. Discharge is actually pretty handy uh, too. So now we've got the Leopard hurt by a little bit of poison. we still got two other remaining Pokemon. I actually did a double swappy. I thought if I can swap for a little bit against this Lampert, the toxic damage would actually rack up nicely. Then I can bring the big boy in, Samurott, and actually take it out with a Hydro Pump. Okay, so toxic does miss against Samurott. I guess that definitely does suck for then. I could go for the Hydro Pump here, and it's going to hit the first turn and take the Lampert out, which is good there. So it's not going to be able to live that one. We still have two Pokemon remaining. We've got the Oricorio Sensei, and we've got the other Pokemon, which has still yet to be revealed, which is the Frostlass. So I was thinking, okay, Frostlass. I know that I can definitely two-hit you know, definitely two hit this thing. And it's going to go for the T-Bolt. As I said, I've got the Thunder, I've got the Assault Vest there. It does, a, it does a fair bit of damage, but I don't think the next one's actually going to take it out unless it's like a, a min damage roll to a max damage roll. So, like, it may have Destiny Bond here, but I'm going to attack it anyway, so it does have Destiny Bond. I think there, at that point, I had to take Frostless out because uh, that, that would have destroyed my Stun Fist if it had, you know, Ice Beam, which, you know, most of them always do. I think I would have lost the Pokemon to Frostless anyway, so I was happy to actually sack the Samurott there. We only had the Ori Kario left to, hand, you know, to kind of handle with. Okay, so Sam Samurott is going to go down. We've got the Simi C and we've got the Stunfist left. And we've got this physical Ori Kario, which we've seen earlier on. Now, this... Uh, I, I try to, I'm not trying to get these Ori Kario sets mixed up. Now, this was the Acrobatics one. This, Yeah, this is Acrobatics one with U10. Okay, now it's going to use Sword Dance right away. I'm like, okay, I've got to get, I've got to get the Toxic on this thing. That is the first thing I did to it anyway, you know, to get the Toxic on it. And it doesn't miss, which was really nice. So, I'm thinking at this point... Well, my Simi Sea right, I mean, it's probably not gonna it's not gonna win this matchup. At least if I can stall maybe a couple of like one or two turns out with it, if I can live the next attack like barely, and then maybe get a fire spin up on it, then my stun fist might be able to finish this off. However, they're gonna go for another sword dance. They're really trying to get their uh, you know attack boost up against me. I'm quite a passive, you know, set here because I'm only gonna do fire spin stuff doing a hell of a lot of damage. 
So we got the Toxic up. We got the Fire Speed up against the Oriko, which is nice. It's actually not going to live for too many turns. They really need to start attacking me now or the, you know, they're going to lose. So we got the over half health to the Orikara. It's going to eat a berry. So I'm like, okay, um, they had that berry. That was going to allow them to get a couple of sword dance up. It's only a citrus berry, though, so it's not going to really do too much. It's probably going to, you know, stall them out maybe one turn. Okay, so we got, they've got Facade, which is actually going to be boosted from the toxic damage I gave them. So I'm like, okay. All right, guys, the last Pokemon is Stunfist again. All I've got to do here, right, is hit them with a discharge. That should be enough damage to actually, you know, take them out. The only thing was, I was worried about a critical hit or how much damage this would actually do to Stunfist. I am running max health though. It does a lot of damage to me, but Stunfist, the MVP, is going to live and that's going to take it out with the discharge damage and the toxic. Hope you guys enjoyed both these battles. Uh, check out that bonus battle and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.